Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 1990 American fantasy romance film titled Edward Scissorhands. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. Our story begins with an elderly woman looking out of a window through falling snow to an old house on a hill. She tells her granddaughter a story of a long time ago when a man, known as the inventor, lived in the old house up on the hill, and how he invented a man, but died before he could finish him. Now we see a modern suburban neighborhood where a woman named Peg is trying to sell Avon products door to door, but with not much success. She knocks on the door of Lady Joyce, but Joyce sends her away because she's trying to flirt with the dishwasher repairman. She thinks she'll try the old house up on the hill, so she drives up the hill. As Peg walks through the gate, she sees a beautiful garden with manicured bushes. She knocks on the door, but when no one answers, she pushes the door open and walks in, as she calls out that she's from Avon. When she finds no one there, she walks up the stairs to the attic, with a large hole in the roof and an old bed in the fireplace. Peg sees some movement down the end of the room and walks towards it, only to find in surprise the strange figure of a man walking towards her with scissors where his hands should be. He tells her his name is Edward, and he lives there alone because his father has died. Peg tells him he should come home with her. We see Peg and Edward driving along the road, and Edward seems very happy to be going somewhere. As they drive through the neighborhood, all the locals are watching. Now we see Marge on the phone to Helen, gossiping about Peg driving by with a man in her car. It seems that the whole neighborhood is talking about Peg and her new friend. Inside Peg's house, Peg is showing Edward the family photos. Edward seems very fascinated by the photos of Peg's daughter, Kim. Peg shows him through the rest of the house. She gives him some clothes to change into and leaves him in Kim's room to change. Edward touches Kim's waterbed, but one of his scissors puts a hole in the mattress, and water starts squirting out at him. He attempts to dress himself, but has no luck until Peg helps him. Meanwhile, all the women in the neighborhood are congregating outside Peg's house, hoping to get a look at Edward. It's not until evening when the women's husbands start arriving home that the women actually leave Peg's house. Now, Edward is having dinner with Peg, her husband Bill, and their son Kevin. Edward can't pick up the knife and fork with his scissor hands. After dinner, Edward goes to bed on Kim's waterbed but feels a little uneasy. The next morning, Peg experiments on Edward's face with all of her different beauty products. In the backyard, Kevin and his friend Max are in the cubby house and Bill is trimming a bush. Edward watches Bill, then sets to work with some trimming of his own and transforms the old bush into a dinosaur. Bill and the boys are amazed. Peg listens to the answering machine playback, which is filled with comments about Edward. Outside, Edward has just finished trimming another bush. A woman named Esmeralda walks into the yard and tells them that Edward is from hell, and she's scared of Edward, so she quickly leaves. Peg answers a knock at the front door. A group of her friends are anxious to meet Edward, so they suggest a barbecue. But Esmeralda stands nearby and warns them that Edward is a perversion of nature and they must resist him. They pay her no notice, so she leaves. In the kitchen, Edward chops up a cabbage and as he watches Peg open a can, we see a flashback in time when the inventor was using his machinery to make cookies. Now we see Peg's backyard with all of her neighbors having a barbecue meeting Edward. They're all fascinated by him. It's evening and Edward is lying on the bed remembering a time when the inventor was teaching him etiquette. Outside, a van pulls up and Peg's daughter Kim and her friends have just arrived back from their camping trip. Kim kisses her boyfriend Jim goodbye and goes into the house. Everyone is in bed, so she goes upstairs to her bedroom and starts to undress. When she sees Edward lying in her bed, she screams in panic. Edward gets such a fright and as he sits up, he punctures the waterbed with his scissor hands. Bill and Peg calm Kim down and explain that he's come to live with them. Bill takes Edward into the den and opens the sofa bed for Edward, then pours two whiskeys and tells Edward it's lemonade. Bill gives Edward a straw to drink his whiskey, and when Edward is finished, he can hardly breathe. In the den, Peg introduces Kim to Edward, but Edward collapses from too much whiskey. The next day, Edward is in Joyce's backyard trimming the bushes for her. She brings him a drink, but when she tells him it's lemonade, he throws up. Now, we see Kevin at school and he's brought Edward with him for show and tell. All the kids think he's wonderful. Back in the neighborhood, we see every house now has a beautifully manicured bush. That night, Kim's boyfriend Jim and her girlfriend Suzanne are having dinner with the family. Bill tells Edward that he should be charging people for his gardening work. Edward uses his scissor hands to carve the roast. The following day, Edward is trimming a bush for one of the neighbors when he looks at her shaggy dog and decides to give it a trim as well. The following day, Edward is trimming a bush for one of the neighbors. Now, there's a lineup of neighbors with their dogs waiting to be trimmed. When he finishes Joyce's dog, she asks him if he could cut her hair. Before you know it, every woman in the neighborhood is getting her hair cut by Edward. 
we see Peg giving Edward the full makeup treatment. Helen takes Edward to the local shopping center to get his scissors sharpened, but when they arrive, he sees Jim with Kim and her friends. He looks at Kim like he's in love with her. When Helen drops Edward off, Kim and Jim are locked out of the house. Edward gives a little giggle with one of his blades and unlocks the door. Now, Peg has Edward with her on a TV talk show. The audience asks him lots of questions, but when they ask him if there's a special girl in his life, he doesn't answer. That's when Kim realizes how Edward feels about her. Edward gets a shock from the microphone and falls backwards. The next day, Joyce is taking Edward to look at a beauty parlor for rent at a local shopping center. She takes him into the back room to show him the smocks she has. But then she turns on some music and straddles him and begins to undress herself. The chair falls back. Then we see Edward making a quick retreat from the shop. I think he's traumatized. He joins the family in a fast food restaurant and tells them about the beauty salon and how Joyce took off all of her clothes. Everyone but Bill is in shock. Bill tells Edward that he should get a bank loan to start up his own business. Peg takes Edward to the bank, but because he has no credit history, no work record, and no security number, the manager won't give him a loan. Now, we see Jim trying to convince Kim to ask Edward if he can pick the lock on a house. It happens to be Jim's house, but while his parents are away, he wants to steal the appliances and sell them to get money to buy his own van. Edward gets him into the house, but when he opens the door where the appliances are kept, the alarm goes off and Edward is trapped in the room. The others take off and leave him trapped inside. The police arrive and turn off the alarm, but when Edward walks out, they are ready to shoot because he won't drop his weapons, which are actually his scissor hands. Just in time, Marge and Sissy come running up and tell the police officer named Alan that they know Edward and those are not weapons, they're his hands. They arrest Edward and take him to the police station. The next day, the court releases him because they don't consider him a threat, but Officer Allen is worried about his welfare. Now, we see five of Peg's neighbors talking about Edward and how they knew something about him wasn't right. Peg arrives home with Edward from the police station and a news team is waiting to interview him, but Peg rushes him inside. She's on the phones to her friends, but it seems they don't want to come to her Christmas party this year. Kim arrives home and talks to Edward. He tells her that he knew it was Jim's house, but he only did it because she asked him to. When Jim comes into the backyard, Edward gets angry and starts cutting things up. That night at dinner, Bill tries to teach Edward the difference between right and wrong. All of Peg's friends are talking about Edward and saying that they're not going to Peg's Christmas party. Peg is inside setting up a Christmas tree. Bill is on the roof laying down the fake snow. Kim walks outside and is in awe watching Edward up on a ladder making an ice carving of a giant angel. As Edward is climbing down the ladder, Jim yells out and Edward's hand comes down, accidentally cutting Kim's hand. Jim starts pushing Edward and abusing him. He tells him to get lost so Edward walks off down the street, cutting his own clothes off and cutting some of the neighbor's bushes. Bill drives around to see if he can find Edward. We see Esmeralda playing an organ when she hears something. She opens her curtains and is horrified to find that her bush has been cut to look like a devil. Officer Allen arrives looking for Edward, but Peg doesn't know where he is, so he drives off looking for Edward. Bill comes home and says he couldn't find Edward. We see Edward sitting in a driveway when the police car is coming so quickly he walks off and goes home. Inside, he and Kim are talking and she hugs him. Edward has a flashback to a time when the inventor was showing Edward a new pair of hands that he made for him. But suddenly, the inventor has a heart attack and falls down dead. So that is why Edward never got to have his own hands. Now, we see Jim and his friend Denny getting drunk in the back of the van. Jim tells Denny to drive him to Kim's house. Kevin is leaving Max's house and walking home. Denny is driving drunk and Edward sees the van coming and sees Kevin about to cross the street in front of the van. In an instant, Edward rushes out and grabs Kevin just in time to save him before the van hits him. Edward accidentally cuts Kevin's face, but when all the neighbors come running out, Edward gets scared. Jim tries to beat up Edward, but when Edward puts his hands to protect himself, he cuts Jim's arm. The police are on their way, so Kim looks at Edward and tells him to run. He turns and runs down the street with the police car following him, and most of the people in the neighborhood as well. Kim hears some gunshots and thinks Edward might be shot. Officer Allen only shoots into the air, and as he leaves, he tells the crowd that it's all over and they should go home. But they decide that they'll look for themselves. Kim has arrived at the house before them, and she goes up to see if Edward is okay. She tells him that she was worried that he might be dead, but Jim followed her, and now he takes a shot at Edward, but misses. He tries to shoot again, but Kim rushes at him, and his shot goes into the roof, and some of it collapses and knocks Edward to the floor. Jim picks up a steel fire poker and starts beating Edward, but Kim picks up some timber and knocks Jim down. She tells him to stop or she'll kill him herself, but he kicks her away. Edward gets up to see if Kim is okay, and Jim tells him to get away from her. But before Jim can strike Edward again, Edward quickly turns and stabs Jim in the chest, 
and pushes him towards a window where he breaks through and falls to his death. Kim and Edward stand at the window looking down at Jim's body, but they can see the others approaching the house. Edward tells her goodbye, but Kim kisses him and tells him she loves him. That's what he was longing to hear. Kim rushes downstairs and grabs a spare scissor hand and goes outside to meet the crowd. She tells them that Edward is dead, that they killed each other. The crowd all turns and goes back to their homes. Now, we see the older woman again, and she tells her granddaughter that she knows he's still alive, because every Christmas it snows, and it only started snowing after they found Edward. The last thing we see is Edward making his ice sculptures in the attic of the old house, and the wind carrying the ice particles away, just like snow. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this, and don't forget to turn on your notifications, that really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.